this segment is called Trading Zero DTEs by Implied Volatility Rank. Hmm. So my question to you is, the Implied Volatility Rank today in the SPX is what? The IV rank is 8.8 .8 in okay. so the SPX. IV rank in the SPX, because when we do zero DTs, we're talking SPX. Yes. Okay. And it, oh, by the way, because it's cash settled, so it just makes things a lot easier. You have to worry about anything, okay? Right. So question for you. 8.8 yeah. .8 is the IV rank in SPX. Yes. That is extremely low. Yes. So that's not going to be mistaken for it's on the borderline or anything like that. No. That is on the no. very... Low side. We are not premium sellers. With 8.8 .8 volatility rank, we do not sell premium generally. But because it's one day, does it matter? I would think it's it still matters, but I do know mathematically that the IVs at one day get a little wacky. And so, yeah. And also the IV rank looks towards 30-day options. So it misses what's going on in the zeros. So it's... And Whatever. Then, and I think I mean, that is important. Well, IV rank looks at the 30 day option. It does not look at the zero days. And I but don't. There's nothing. There's no extra premium hiding in the zero right. days. They're cheap too. I just don't believe that the zero days, that when trading zero day options, that IVR matters. Okay. I just see. don't think IVR is important in zero days. Yeah, I don't, I don't think see. it is. We're going to see. Yeah. I mean, I think IVR is important every other time, but in zero days, you know, I, we don't pay attention to it. So at Tasty, one of our longest standing and most successful metrics for evaluating a potential short option trade has been IVR. That's been kind of our wheelhouse for the last 20 some odd years. The newest space for trading is the fast paced and exciting world of zero DT options. And we're doing research as fast as we can to figure out how our experience with longer, data, longer, longer dated options translates over time. So now that we have a full year's worth of data, Let's see how helpful IVR would have been for a zero DT short premium trader. We got a lot of questions on this. This is why we went here. Mm -hmm. Using one year of data in the SPX, collected every 10 minutes. That's what we've been doing from the start. We examined selling straddles as well as 10, 20, and 30 delta out of the and $30 out of the money strangles. For me personally, $30 out of the money strangles is too far in the SPX with low volatility. So I've been using 20 deltas. They tend to average around, right around four or $5 for the straddle. I mean, I'm sorry, for the $20 strangle. Okay, I don't know where it is right now, but they tend to be right around, on the opening, they tend to be right around between four and a half and five dollars. So all the trades were placed on the market opening. We're, we're an hour past the opening right now. The trade reached 25% of its max profit, it was closed. Trades that did not reach their max profit were allowed to expire. And we contrasted those results when the IVR was computed by looking at the VIX at market open was above 25 versus when it was below. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start with straddles. This is when you sell the at the money put and the at the money call. Okay. You collect a lot more money when you sell straddles. The win rates quite high. Now, again, zero DTs have been an unbelievable trade this year because everything you've done has worked. There's been no such thing as a bad zero DT trade because Volatility is contracted and market doesn't go anywhere. That's right. I'm sorry. The market's gone higher, but volatility is contracted. There's been virtually no outlier moves intraday. Right. It's been crazy. Right. Today, it worked as well. The win rate has been, in this case, in the 80s. Overall, high, low, it doesn't matter. Um, the P&Ls have been extremely high. Low IVR has even been better, which is crazy. And the CVAR has been about the same. That's kind of your, you know. And, and the critical thing to look at here is the high IVR rank had a lower average PL compared to the low IVR rank at 216. So, so we keep haven't that done anything. In mind. We haven't done anything. Yep. Keep, keep that, that in mind. mind. So now we go to the $10 wide strangles. $10 wide strangles, kind of the low IVR outperformed again and with a really high win rate. So low IVR has not hurt you here at all. So low IVR made $144 versus the high IVR made $125. And again, a higher a higher percentage of winning trades but again the in this zero dte world the difference between 79 percent and 88 percent is is a meaning is doesn't mean anything they're both very high probability trades but the whole idea of using ivr in the zero dtes shows that it doesn't matter here because i'm making more money on average with the low ivr than the high ivr this is the one I usually do. And this one, it actually started to make a difference. As you got further out of the money, you made more money with the $20 wide strangles and the high IVR. 
this is the one that where I usually live. I don't know why it tends to work the best for me. You know, whether you buy the wings or you don't buy the wings, yep. it tends to work the best. So it's here, you make a lot more with the high IVRs, okay, than the low IVRs. Yes. Then, um, let's go to the next one, which is $30 wide out of the money. And in this case, exactly the same as the 20. So in the 20 and $30 wide, you have a higher win percentage. You obviously are taking significantly less risk and you're actually doing quite well because the market just hasn't done anything. So just to explain why this is happening a little bit is the IVR, the IV rank, in other words, looks at the 30 day options and is an overall VIX style calculation. So it uses all the out of the money um, options in its calculation. When you have those at the monies, regardless of where the volatility is, they're all kind of the same, kind of the same price, kind of the same price. It's when the, the skew gets pushed up, the out of the money options get pushed up in values, those 20, 30 point, 40 point, 50 point out of the money options increase their, vol increase their values, that increases the IV rank. That's what you're seeing here with the high IVR at those 20 and 30 point out of the money strangles. The skews are up, the, the skews are steeper in these high IVR environments, or the, the, the steeper skew creates the, high IV, creates the high IVR and you're getting rewarded for selling those far out of the money strangles. That's the mechanics of what's happening here. And again, these results were very mixed. At first, when you sold the big options, you did better with the low IVR. When you sold the, when you sold the smaller options, you did better with the high IVR. Mm -hmm. But all of them worked. Right. You made money. Regardless. Yeah, all of them worked, which we, we're still, we don't think this will continue, but it has continued way longer than we thought it would. Um, let's go, let's take a look. So while high IVR has almost always been favorable for long dated short premium trades, the zero DT show more nuanced results. Yeah. For a zero DT option seller, it appears that high IVR may be a good sign for further out of the money, while the closer they have the money trades perform better in low IVR. So remember that in order to sell naked zero DT options, most accounts will need to purchase far out of the money wings. We purchase the wings that are $20 past those. This will reduce your daily PL by 10 to $30, depending on how much buying power you're willing to commit. And in our numbers, we have also taken out the dollar for um, transaction fees both ways. Okay, I mean, with the, I'm sorry, there's only transaction fees one way, but then you have the um, exchange fees. So we've added that in there. So this is a little, this is adjacent to the discussion about estimating max loss when you're buying power reduction. Remember that it didn't work that way, in, in other words, it was somewhat less reliable looking at the at the money stuff, right? But became much more consistent when you were selling the out of the money premium. It's a different concept here. It's yeah. a different concept. But this, but the, but still, selling if you want reliable trades, pushing it out further out of the money, pushing those short options further out of the money, taking in a little less profit. Okay, yeah. But it's a more reliable trade. Yes, you can make more money in all in, in, in certain environments when you sell the at the money stuff, and that's fine if you want to do it. But my comfort zone is in those 20 to 30 point out of the money options, like you were saying. That's what I do.